Hello, and welcome to the Pain-Free Lifestyle Podcast. I am your host, Rebecca Geiger. I am a pain management coach and neuromuscular therapist. I want to share specific strategies and tools to help you get out of pain so you can live a happy and healthy lifestyle. If you're interested in that, please subscribe to the podcast, give this episode a like, and also comment on what your biggest takeaway was from today's episode. Let's get into it. You got to be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. Ugh. I asked for a physical challenge this year and I definitely got it. <laughs> Today, I really want to talk about recurring pains. I want to talk about why they happen and what the best approach is in dealing with it and treating it and ultimately getting them to go away for good. And throughout this, I'm going to share my personal experience because I am dealing with a recurring pain right now, and I have in the past, and we're going to talk a little bit about that because honestly, a past recurring pain has led me to a new recurring pain. (laughs) I'll explain as we go along. Let's talk about recurring pain. So a recurring pain is a pain, basically, that comes and goes. Now, sometimes this pain is a pain that comes and then goes with treatment and then comes back, or it's a pain that just comes up and then you end up, you know, it ends up going away, but then eventually comes back. So those are the pains that we're talking about. So it could be something that happens pretty frequently, and it could also be something that happens like every few years or once every 18 years, as I'll talk about. But a recurring pain, I just wanted to simply define that. It's just a pain that comes and goes. And there are a few reasons. I'm sure there's more reasons that this is happening, but I'm going to talk about the main reasons that I think it's happening. Number one, it could be a compensation pattern from a previous injury. So this, I would think, and in my case, this is happening due to your body just compensating to relieve of the original issue, especially because the original issue wasn't fully addressed. And because I didn't fully address this hip issue, it has come back. I'll explain in a minute. However, your body is so good. It's so smart. It's so adaptable. And we will tweak and twist and turn and do things to relieve pressure off of an area so we don't feel that pain. And so what happens is we think oh, the pain's gone, the issue has fixed because I don't feel that pain anymore. But what happened is your body was like, well, you're not listening to me anyway. It hurts, you haven't done anything about it. And so I'm going to relieve it myself by distorting your body. (laughs) And so therefore, we'll take the pain away. You'll think it's gone, but it's not really gone. And 18 years later, you'll figure out why it has come back. So compensation compensation. That's a big one, why it comes and goes. And again, especially when it's something that hasn't been treated um, because your body is going to treat it itself. Now, the second reason a recurring pain happens is a product of your body mechanics, for lack of a better word. The broad category is there's probably something you're doing that maybe you're just not realizing that you're doing, or it's part of your daily job or or life that you just can't um, get away from. So if you're breastfeeding for 15 months, you might have this recurring back pain due to the position that you're in. If you have to sit for work, you might have recurring low back pain. Um, If you are someone who uses your hands a lot and doing um, sort of like repetitive work at your job, whether it's like in a factory on the line or something like that, or just constantly going through paperwork, you might have recurring shoulder pain. Now, these kinds of pains um, are things that you can definitely treat um, and to get to where maybe they're not as bad. But this is one of those things that it's a recurring pain that you know, you might just have to manage more than get it to completely go away, never come back because you got to work. This is where it drives me crazy when some doctors will tell my clients like, oh, it hurts. Okay, we'll stop working out. Yeah, but what if it hurts because of my job? It's not really the workout I did in the gym. It's everything else I'm doing in the gym just happened to bring it out because these are activities I don't do in my daily life. And I'm sitting most of the time. So anytime I'm trying to ask my body to like outstretch and do an activity, it's not the activity. It's my body is just unable to do it. And that's okay because either it's an activity or a movement that maybe you just don't ever really need or want to do like box jumps for me. I just, 
I don't know. I feel like I just, I don't really need to do that. Um, I like to jump and I'm going to get my jumping in other ways because jumping is actually really great for your lymphatic system. But a box jump is just not for me. And that's okay. But maybe it is lunges. That's something that I know that I just have to work on getting my hips back in alignment and getting things straightened out and strengthened um, to be able to do those things. Just wanted to bring that up because it's not always the activity that you're doing. It's just that your body isn't prepared for that activity and it can get prepared if you give it the time and the right things. Another reason why you might get recurring pain is due to inflammation and or stress. If you haven't listened yet, go back to episode five and there I'll talk to you about the three causes of pain and inflammation and stress are definitely part of that. So a recurring pain could be due to, um, you know, acute inflammation that's putting pressure, say on that area, or it could be, um, or even chronic inflammation that, you know, is probably mostly managed, but then maybe you have a flare up or something, um, maybe due to stress, they're very linked. Um, or it's just a stressful time, which is creating more tension in your body and more inflammation in your body. So that could also be part of it. Um, the other reason why you may have recurring pain is not getting the right treatment, either originally or keeping up with maintenance. Because we all, you know, understand for the most part that like, okay, I got hurt. Let me do some things, get rid of the pain. And then we forget that there are things that you need to do to keep up with that. And again, we talked about this um, in episode six. So go listen to that if you haven't yet about breaking the pain cycle, but there is a level of maintenance that you have to do a, no a level of mobility and conditioning for your body to keep it limber, to keep it feeling good. So you're not getting those pains. Um, and so in my case, I'll share what I'm going through real quick. And I shared in episode one about fixing my knee pain. I had severe knee pain that I thought when I bent my knee that it was going to crack and break. It was so bad. And I got that pain to go away with about within about three weeks and felt really good. Now that pain has since come back. And if you go back to episode one and listen to that, I told you about how I think that pain was originally from a hip issue. And what happened is I had a recurring foot pain for a couple of years that I'm like, something's got to be going on in my hips. Like I just always go back to the hips. Like that is where all your movement comes from. That is your core. I just feel there's a lot of stuff in your hips that are causing a lot of other issues, especially when it's related to knees, ankles, um, and back too. And so I was like, let me work on this thing in my hip, which I talked about. I did. I got a release. It was great. Oh, it felt, oh, it was tender. There was a lot of stuff going on in that hip. And I was like, oh my God. And so I released that. The foot pain went away. And then what do you know? Knee pain. And I have previously had knee pain um, when I was pregnant with my first daughter. And so that was a recurring thing as well. And so I was like, oh gosh. And so I treated that. And I knew all along that I needed to work on my hips. Like I just knew that's where it's coming from. And I mentioned this, um, that I was working on it and I was working on it, um, in the sense that I modified things at the gym. I was more intentional about how I was using it, but I spent so much time just trying to research like what I was going to do that I never actually started doing the Pilates or yoga or anything until like a couple weeks ago. Therefore, like I knew I needed to work on that. And so I did it. And then um, not in the way that I should have. And so the right knee pain was coming back now did not come back as bad. I could still do squats. I could do things. It was definitely not as bad. But knowing how bad it had been, I did not want it to get to that point. So I was like, dang, and part of me feels like maybe I, you know, because it was feeling so good, I started using it a little bit too much. And that's probably true. And it's not even that it was the knee problem. It was just the fact that my body was compensating for this old issue. And so about 18 years ago or so, I actually fell down some a flight of steps. And these were wooden steps, very steep. I was, this is probably a karma moment, honestly, but I, um, I remember I was working at a restaurant and it was Valentine's Day and I was scheduled to be a hostess and not a server. And if you know anything about the restaurant business, you make way less money as a hostess um, than you would a server. And I was honestly just annoyed 
And I was like, well, I'm not going to go to work because I can't believe that you're scheduling me to do hosting when I'm a server. And I just was basically being a rebel and decided to call off work. And the funny thing is my husband, um, well, it's now my husband, boyfriend at the time, he worked there too. And like, he went to work. So this wasn't like I was trying to get off for Valentine's Day and do anything. Um, it was just that I was honestly just mad. And I was just like being in my fields. Like, listen, you know, I have been immature 100%. I have been there. Um, and so anyway, so I, I called off work and I decided I was going to clean the house because I think a little bit of guilt inside was like, well, if you're not going to go to work, like you might as well be productive. Um, I always had that like devil and angel on my shoulders. Like, I don't know. It's always there, but anyhow. So at the time we had a two story, two family. And so we had one half and our neighbors had the other half. So for our steps, we had like the top attic. We had the, basically the bottom floor and the attic. And so it's so weird to think because like they had the second floor. So we basically go up two flights of steps to get to our attic, which actually had two rooms. We had a foosball table in one room. And then the other room, we just had a bed and uh, a TV. We'd go up there sometimes and hang out, just like an extra hangout room. And so I was up there cleaning and I threw um, some blankets down the steps so I could go wash them and totally forgot that I threw these blankets down the step and here I come trotting down the steps and I just, my feet went out in front of me and I slammed down on my tailbone. This was the like worst pain I think I'd ever felt. It was so, it was worse than like cutting my leg. Like it was so bad that I really thought I broke something. Like I thought, oh my God. And not only did I hurt my hip, but I hurt my shoulder. And so that was really, really, really bad. I freaking hurt myself. I hurt myself really bad. And I went to the hospital actually, um, because I really thought I broke something. So I need to get x-rays. And funny enough, they didn't even x-ray my hips. They only x-rayed my shoulder, which I'm like looking back now. I'm like, why did they not do that? And, and why did I advocate for myself? But again, I was probably like 19 years old, 20 maybe. And I didn't know how to advocate for myself at that time. And so looking back, gosh, you know, hindsight is always 20, 20, but I wish I would have, but, um, anyway, they looked at it, I guess. And, you know, it was bruised. I could feel like a divot in it and all this stuff. And I should have done physical therapy, but I didn't, I did go and have massage therapy because at the time I, I think I'd already graduated massage school. I was in massage school at the time. So I was getting some therapy on it that way. And I remember they're really focused on my glutes. He was like too rough with it. It was just like, I didn't feel good. It was like not the right treatment. So then I just basically like did nothing and just like kind of like I stretched it, did my own thing. And what ultimately happened is I just compensated for it. Um, and now since then, I mean, I did do Pilates and yoga and I really got myself feeling good where I didn't, it didn't hurt. So I think maybe eventually I did kind of, you know, fix it by doing those things and exercising it on my own. But I never had like the proper treatment from the beginning. And so, you know, fast forward 18 years, two children, lots of issues um, or changes in my hips. And then here I am not doing the Pilates and core exercises that I know I need to do. And every time I do Pilates and yoga, I just feel better. And that's why it's been such a big deal for me to get back into it because I know I just feel better doing it. But now knowing this issue and I'm feeling the same kind of pain that I felt when I did this release in December before my knee hurt, um, which is so weird because it was like my foot hurt. But so I worked on my, my hip, got rid of the foot pain, but now made my opposite knee hurt. And <clears throat> I think what happened is that because I like released it, I, I, I opened up like Pandora's box. I released this restriction in there and then it showed that, man, I was putting so much weight and pressure on the side. And so <clears throat> once that was all fixed and good, I was good. And here's the thing. When things don't hurt, you don't do things that you need to do for. And I feel like I'm already working out. I'm already doing these things, right? Life is busy. I'm having the baby, but I am at a point now where I can make it work and I'm going to make it work. And I am, I am doing it. Um, so I'll share with you like kind of what I'm doing here in a minute. But the point is the pain, um, is really funky. It's like nerve pain, like down my leg. It's even like pain like in my glute like basically in my butt when I sit down going up my back just on one side and even like down my leg and then it will go to like a weird itchy feeling that I can feel like down all the way into my foot and then there are points where it's just like totally numb this pain started last week so today is Tuesday this pain started I don't want to say it started last it, the, the severity of it 
started last Tuesday. And um, I have been getting work done on, like every time I'm getting a massage, I have work done on it. I have, when I go to the chiropractor, he tries to adjust it. He's never been able to actually like pop my SI joint on that side. Um, we're always focused on the right side, the right side, the right hip. And I even, I don't know, sometimes I just wish, you know, I could massage myself and I, and I can in some areas, but like, it's really hard to get to this one area and I can't get there myself. Now I might be getting a new tool, stay posted because um, I did have this really great tool that I was using to do things in my back that might help, but it's just, it's just one of these things where like you need the perfect angle to be able to get it. Um, and I need like the right person, um, to do that. And so anyway, <laughs> the point is I got a massage and it was amazing. It was a great massage, but it was just not treat, treat, did not treat that specific area. And because of the other things that we were doing, it like really made it obvious for me of what was going on. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I had seen my chiropractor the week before and I was like, let me go back to the chiropractor because now that I had a massage, maybe he can do the adjustment because it's a team effort. You know, it's not just the massage that that treats everything. You know, you massage, PT, chiropractor, exercise, stress management, nutrition, all of that all really go into um, having a pain free life. And so and treating those physical pains. And so anyway, um, so then I go to the chiropractor and. I'm telling him about it. And he's like, yeah, he's like, wow, there really is some stuff going on there. So he's doing like his adjustment for the piriformis, like click something in my hip when I'm face down and my knees bent. And then he was able to actually like do the SI um, release and adjust is the first time it ever popped. So like I've known and I've known this for a long time. And I, I was thinking it was from having my baby when I had my first daughter 12 years ago, almost 13 years ago. I was still a server at the restaurant and I was like finishing up. I was actually working on my business, writing my business plan, finishing up some of my college courses. And in order to see the screen, I always had to move my belly to the left. So I was rotating my hips to the left and my torso basically to the right. Um, and I was twisted. So I thought it was all from that. And I think that is what exacerbated or brought up the old injury. So everything's kind of going back to this one fall that I had uh, <clears throat> that had some really deep, scarring and bruising um in there that just really needed needs it still needs to be worked out i went to the chiropractor he did his adjustment it was great it felt better almost almost instantly um like it didn't go away it was just like this pain that was from like my mid thigh up to my back when i would sit was just centered now in my hip and now i'm being super aware of everything that i'm doing i'm noticing that like when i bend over i'm putting all this weight to the right side like oh my gosh it's so crazy for me to think about how much working out i've done at the gym and how much i've been able to do knowing that there's been part of my body that's been completely shut off it's crazy because my body and our bodies do this they compensate they will work harder and then that's when you end up getting these pains and it's like wow Maybe this pain is actually from a previous injury. And to be honest, if you catch this early enough, and this is what I, I really try to do with my clients when they come in and they're like, I've got this pain. And I'm like, oh, what else has been going on? Have you ever had another injury? What's been going on? How do your hips feel? How do your knees feel? You know, like, and I try to work on those areas too, to make sure that we're kind of addressing the, the whole picture, the whole person in that way, because it often does go back to that. So I've just been really focused and I'm saying like, oh my gosh, all this stuff. And it's just, it's, it's reminding me of that same pain that I felt. It's getting much better. I'm actually going to the chiropractor here today to stay on top of it. I'm booking a massage for next week. And then I see um, my other massage therapist in three weeks and I started PT. So I, uh, physical therapy. And so I did physical therapy. I talked about this in episode six um, because I'm using an online platform and for my knee, like I have almost no knee pain, like depending on how I move or squat, I will have a little bit of knee pain, um, but it's pretty much gone, you know, um, but now it's all centered in my hip. And maybe too, I'm like focused on my hip so much, um, like that makes it feel worse because when I really think about it, I'm like, I've had this pain for a long time and it's been like, come, it just comes and goes. And I think my back is compensated. So many things are compensated to relieve that pain. But anyway, like, it's just, again, like hindsight's 2020, we look back and say, like, oh, well, actually that's been hurting for a while. It just hasn't bothered me that much. Like, you know, my knee hurt, like when that, my knee hurt, it was like, I can't move it. Like, that's a problem. Like when you can't move something, you know, like we just push through our pains until like, we literally can't push through it anymore. And so, 
gosh, I knew all these things in my 20s. And I, you know, you think about like, if I would have just done that. But you know what, maybe I wouldn't appreciate it as much if I didn't go through this process. Um, and I still know that I'll be, I'll be okay. And I'll get it all straightened out and worked out. But um, I was doing the physical therapy for my knee for about 10 days. And then I just switched it yesterday to do um, piriformis syndrome and SI joint pain. I was following a jumper's knee per protocol. And, um, and that helped, but then we we're doing got into some squats. Oh, that was the other thing. The next level of exercises were actually making my back and my butt hurt. And like, I was like, oh, this is like not good. And so that's why I was like, oh, again, I got to go back to my hips. Like I've, I've known it, you know, like we know, like, you know, what's best for you know, what's going on with you. You know what you have to do It's just whether you're doing it or not. And again, I am doing other things. It's not like I'm not doing anything, but anyway, I'll have to go on that subject. I just I share because like, I can really relate. I can really relate. Oh, even if someone who knows better, you know, doesn't always do better. Sorry, Maya. Um, Because that's life. That is life. We talked about why it's all happening. Now let's talk about the best approaches um, and what you can do to relieve yourself of this recurring pain. Now, number one, you got to figure out like, what are you even doing for it now? Are you doing anything to help prevent this pain or to release the pain? So, there are a few categories of things that you need to be doing somewhat on a regular basis or specifically for whatever pain that you're experiencing, which is number one, releasing the tension. You have to release the tension. If a muscle is locked up because it's tense, it's either turned off because it's um, the brain shuts it down. So it doesn't continue to injure or, you know, it doesn't continue to get injured or get damaged. And so the brain will shut it down. And so you need to like turn the muscle back on, release the tension stretch it out. Um, stretching is not is something that I would do after releasing, you know, and sometimes stretching is not the best thing because if it stretches and we talked about this before, I can't remember which episode, uh, I should probably devote a whole episode to stretching because there's so much into it. Um, your nerves do not like to be stretched. So, you know, if it is a nerve issue, like I gotta be careful with my piriformis because it does squeeze on the sciatic nerve. And that's why I'm getting these nerve symptoms. Um, so I have to be careful how I stretch it because, the nerve doesn't like to be stretched. The nerve does not like to be stretched. Um, the muscle does, but so you got to like work with them together. So release it, stretch it if it needs to be stretched. Also alignment, that's why it's great for the chiropractor. So what are you doing to just get your joints um, and your spine in alignment? Um, strengthening, you know, there is a huge component is strengthening. But this time, this sometimes gets to be the main focus. You know, like I had someone who was like, you really need to strengthen your quad for your knee. I'm like, and I knew like when he said this, I was like, that's not it. Like, that's what hurts. Like, that's what really hurts because my quad is overworking for a discrepancy in my hip. Crazy. That's the left hip. That was a real problem, but they both need to be strengthened. But so strengthening is definitely an important part, but it's like what area needs to be strengthened. And there needs to be a balance of strength um, across your body. Also, managing stress. Like, how are you managing your stress? Do you have any systems in place or anything to managing stress? Are you stress? Are you able to eliminate some stress? Are you able to incorporate things to help you to just be more resilient to it? Also, inflammation. You know, because inflammation can be a cause of these recurring pains. What are you doing to manage your inflammation and keep that lower? Again, just analyze what you're doing because if you're not doing any of these, that might be a great place to just start. You know, maybe you need to just like go get a massage and release that pain and see, you know, where it's coming from, see what's happening there and see if you can release it to stretch it. And maybe you need to see the chiropractor to get some alignment, um, go to yoga class, go to Pilates. So it's like try some different things and just see how you feel. Um, you might be able to start some <clears throat> simply there. It all depends on the level of your pain um, and what you're going through. Everyone is so individual, you know, but strengthening it. How are you man? How are you exercising it? And again, like the stress and inflammation, but just see what you're doing in these areas. And if there's anything that you can do to improve those areas. Um, the next thing, this is very important is get to the root cause. Like, why are you having this recurrent reoccurring pain? Like we gave four reasons on why. So uh, is it a compensation? Is it because your body mechanics is it related to inflammation or stress? Or is it because you never got the treatment you need? You know, if it's a previous injury like mine, there's proper therapy that I should have had that I didn't do. And because it was an actual serious injury, now nothing was broken, thank goodness, but I had a very deep muscle bruise 
And I mean, I, I know I tore something in there. I could feel the divot for so many years. Like there was a crease in my muscle. Anyhow, is it previous injury that you actually need to get therapy for? And um, like for me, I'm doing the therapy on it now. And so what I've had to do is number one, do the therapy. I talked about this last time of my goal is to incorporate Pilates and yoga on a regular basis. But to start, I wanted to get the specific therapy that I need to work this specific part of my body that has basically been neglected um, and turned off for several years, apparently. And I think I don't think the entire 18 years has been turned off because it's just because I've done these things and it's been really good. It's just that it's definitely a recurring thing that is not doesn't feel good. And I know that I have to have something long term for the rest of my life, not just now, but it's going to start with me doing this physical therapy. So while I'm doing this physical therapy, <clears throat> which the plan I have is a 12 week plan during that time, I am going to modify and adjust my current workouts, which I really do not have a problem doing. Um, it's like, I get annoyed sometimes just like anyone else when like there's things that you want to do, but then, you know, you can't, or like, I'll try it. Like yesterday we did, we had to hold on to um, some bars and then jump over a hurdle while we're holding on to the bars. And it was totally fine. Like the first go around, but then my knee started hurting and I was like, dang, that sucks. But, you know, I'll just like jump up and down instead. Like, so it's like, yes, yeah, like, you know, it's annoying, but I know that if I, baby it right now, I'll be able to do those things that I want to do without having pain later. I'm lowering my weights on everything that I'm doing. I'm just doing less weight and I'm really focused on the specific muscles that I'm working, which is what you should be doing anyway. That's how you build muscle. But I'm noticing, um, and I've even noticed during certain exercises, I'm like, I feel like, why is my hip coming forward? Why is this? Like, I know this is an issue. And again, like, you know, you know, you know, the intuition is telling me and it just took, you know, the pain, the pain that you just don't want to deal with before um, you do something about it um, or to like really dive into it, I guess, because I enjoy something about it. So like you, you probably are doing something about it, but you just need to switch it up to really get in there, get focused to get it gone. But um, during the whole therapy session, even if it starts to feel better, I'm still going to maintain that modify. So you will not be seeing me doing any PRs until at least late July, maybe early August, maybe my birthday present to myself will be a PR. We'll see. But if it's a previous injury, get the proper therapy that you need for it. And just because it is 18 years old, doesn't mean that like, there's nothing you can do about it. Like there are physical therapy, you can do chiropractic massage, um, that kind of stuff. And then again, to maintain your current workout, if you want to, like, I, again, I hate when people are, I just, I just hate with some folks are like, oh, just do your physical therapy exercises. Don't do the other exercises. I'm like, if I only did my physical therapy exercises, I would still be in pain. Like it feels better to work out. And so, and, and not to mention, like, I want to work out the rest of my body, you know, like I don't want to just focus on my left hip, you know what I mean? And so, um, even though some of the physical therapy exercises are, um, you know, bilateral, I don't, I still like want to do my normal workout just with some modifications. So keep that in mind. If you also are told by your physical therapist, like don't do your other exercises, I would like really question it and advocate for yourself and, you know, really see like, is this something I really don't need to do? Or are they just telling me that because they're afraid I'm going to screw something up? Because if you can modify and you can work out the rest of your body, like, I think that's what we should be doing. Again, disclaimer, I'm not a doctor. Always speak to your doctor or other trusted healthcare provider for medical advice. Okay. But I will say, be your own advocate and ask questions. This is all, again, related to getting to the root cause. So we just talked about, is it a previous injury or is it something you're doing? Is it body mechanics? Okay. So maybe for your work, you have to sit a lot. Is there something that you can do to not sit all day? You know, you do have to work. So please don't quit your day job. And, uh, but if you are able to do it, you can get a standing desk. Or I saw even at like big lots, they make these razors where you can put it on a normal desk and then it raises your screen up and down so then you're able to stand and the thing is you want to do both you don't want to sit all day and you don't want to stand all day and in fact if you could even do where you sit stand and walk that would be awesome that's either taking breaks from your desk and going and taking a little walk around your house clean up a little bit or you know if you are at the office like taking a walk around 
you know, the floor, or if you're able to go outside a few times, walking to the, you know, get a drink of water or a snack or something, or if it's at home, um, they do make walking pads and stuff. You, you're meant to move, you know, any static thing, like it's going, it's, it's helpful. It can be hurtful. And so you want a combination that's sitting, standing and walking. And then, um, you know, what other kinds of jobs, like I was mentioning, like if you are using your arms a, a lot by this repetitive movement that you're doing, working on a line or something similar to that, or maybe you have to bend over and lift things a lot, you know, are you able to use different uh, tools or are you able to stand differently in order to make that better? Can you change how you're doing something? Can you build strength in those areas that you know that you're overusing during work? Lots of things to think about. Um, just because you do have to do this stuff doesn't mean that you have to necessarily suffer in the pain. Also, it could be your posture just in sitting or standing or walking. You know, so we work on, you know, really opening up your chest, which to be honest, like doing some massage and stretching on your front is going to help your posture in your back because it's kind of hard to like strengthen your back when your front is like so strong and bringing you forward. So it's about doing both. It's about strengthening your upper back and releasing the stuff in the front to help work on that posture. Or maybe with your standing, you know, you're sit, you're kind of sinking into your hips when you're walking, sitting or standing versus like sitting up tall, imagining like a string coming from the top of your head, pulling you up. That can really help uh, with your posture. My old Pilates instructor, I would say one of her great tips was um, do not ever adjust your rear view mirror or adjust your seat because you're probably have sunken down into your seat. Um, just little things like that to work on it because that stuff can help those pains um, be less frequent. Now, Again, for some of these things, it's stuff that maybe by you changing some stuff, you can get rid of the pain. Maybe it's something that just becomes managed. And at that point, and that if it's that, if that's the case, <laughs> then have a massage therapist, chiropractor, physical therapist, any other sort of body worker on deck. Like have these people as your care team. Either have regular appointments scheduled with them. If you know it's something that you are going to deal with, I have lots of clients who come in with the same stuff because it's due to work. It's due to things that they can't change. And so we work on those things to help them to live their life and to be able to work and still play and, and just do the things that they need to do with less pain. Um, and then the second thing is make a plan. You have to have a plan. So when we talked about analyzing what it is that you're doing now, so say it's something where you're like, well, I'm not really strengthening it very much. Okay, make a plan to then strengthen that. Pick one of them and just start doing it. It's hard to do everything at once. And I give lots of categories and suggestions and things for you to think about. But ultimately, you don't have to start everywhere. Just start somewhere. And you can slowly add these things on. So for me right now, I am still working out four or five days a week. Um, at the gym and I am taking walks as often as I can. And then I'm doing my physical therapy and I'm doing physical therapy pretty much every day. And I'll be honest, I have 10 exercises that between these two programs and I'm not doing every single one of the program uh, exercise exercises every day. And I'm not doing the reps exactly as they have listed there. And that's just because I'm going to be realistic. Like sometimes I'm just tired or it doesn't really feel good. And I'm just going to listen to my body and I'm going to do what I think is good because I need a combination of these two. And since I am using um, an online platform and not talking to someone, I'm pretty sure they would probably say the same thing or they would not have me do 10 exercises. Um, so I'm just kind of playing with it um, as I go. And I'm tracking um, the results and stuff through this app, which is really nice. And so once I am through with that, then I will stick, then I will um, switch to a maintenance plan. And so right now um, outside of the gym, oh, I forgot to mention that I am doing yoga um, right now I just did it once and I need to do it this week. So I'm, I guess I'm going to do it every other week until at least every other week. If I can go every week, I will, but I'm going to like make it a point to go every other week while I'm in physical therapy. And then once I'm done with physical therapy, then I'm going to switch to doing Pilates every other week and yoga every other week as my maintenance plan. Cause this is something I talk to my clients a lot about too. And I get it. Like, I want it to, I want to be out of this pain. I just want it to be gone, you know, but it will come back if you don't have a maintenance plan. If you're not exercising on a regular basis, if you aren't strengthening your core in some way or the other. Now, if you do go through physical therapy, I would say, please ask your physical therapist 
before you graduate, ask them to give you a series of exercises that you can do for maintenance that maybe you just do once a week to maintain what you've done. Or I'm not sure I'd say and or, you know, what are the top exercises that you think I should do um, if I start to feel something come up? Because if the reason you're in pain is because of something that you do, you get physical therapy, it helps. It's going to come back if you don't change what you do, if you can't change what you do, or you don't have things put in place to keep it at bay. And I'm telling you, I've been through physical therapy three times. Every time I'm like, yoga, Pilates, yoga, Pilates, yoga, Pilates, because every single exercise, even I'm doing it now, there is, it is either a legitimate, like actual Pilates or yoga exercise, or it is very similar to it, which I know that Pilates and yoga will give me all the same results. But because it is a specific area, I do want that specific work right now. And that's why I'm not doing the PT or me doing just Pilates and yoga now um, as my therapy, because I just, it's, it's too bad. It's too bad to do that. If the, if the pain was more bilateral and not as bad, I can get away with just doing that. But anyway, you got to have a plan. And that's my plan right now is to have the maintenance to have it uh, stay away. Um, at, in addition to the like strengthening part of my plan and stretching part of my plan, I've seen the chiropractor about every six weeks is my goal for maintenance right now. I might see him every week or then every two weeks. Um, it just kind of depends. It's really great because he's like, come as you need. And I love that. And then for massage, you know, I would love to go at least once a week, every other week. But right now I'm just committed to going once a month because I can do a lot of self treatment on my own too, but there's certain things that I cannot get to. And so, um, I do see massage therapists every week and then, you know, managing stress, having good nutrition, sleep habits, these daily habits are really helpful. And so that's something for you to think about too, is have your plan to get yourself out of the pain. Now have a plan for maintenance once you aren't experiencing that pain anymore. And you can designate these things that you do over like daily or weekly or even monthly habits. So you don't have to do everything all at once. You don't have to be perfect at anything. Because if you, you know, follow too many experts, you're going to be very overwhelmed because they're going to say, do these four things every single day. There's no way in hell you're going to be doing all that stuff every single day. There's not enough time in the day, especially again, if you're like a busy working mom like me, like we got things to do. I can't be spending all day doing those things. And you don't need to do that. Like, yes, will you get best results quicker? Well, yeah, it'll happen quicker because you get more time to spend on it, but it doesn't mean that's the only way it's going to work. And if you actually take your time doing it, you'll still get the same benefits. It just might take a little bit longer, but that's better than not getting them at all because you physically can't do it as often as like every single part of every expert that you have in these different categories are going to tell you to, you know what I mean? So you know what's best for you. You know what your schedule is like. You know what you can commit to. And maybe, you know, it might be something that's like, oh, I'm a 90% sure I can do this. Like, it doesn't have to just ease. Nothing's going to just like slide right in your day, like not even be like have no effort. You're going to have a little bit of effort, but it doesn't have to be like super hard work. Um, And one thing I really, really want to share is that you have to be ready and willing to just ride the waves. Because just like with weight loss, pain relief is not linear. And you might even think in a pain that you're having right now is a recurring pain. And then it might lead you to like me having like this hip issue that this is very like it's I want to say it's like it's pretty severe pain. Like I did have to take um, some anti-inflammatory yesterday because it was really, really bad. And I don't take medicine unless like it's really, really bad. And so um, that's why I like I got to get back to the chiropractor because he said if it's bad, go. And um and so, so like it hurt worse than it did last week. Like it's, it's again, it's going up and down where it's getting better and getting worse, but that's part of the process. And that's normal. And if it means you do take some anti-inflammatories, like the medication versus just working on like the food and stress component of inflammation and sleep related component of inflammation, that's okay. Like you just don't want to live on this forever and you don't want to just mask it and not deal with it. That's the problem that I have with medication is that you take it to get rid of the pain, but you never do the things that you need in order to get rid of the pain because there are things that you need to do. And I'm telling you, like, it seems a little bit harder at first when you're going through these things, but just go through it. And before you know it, you're going to be like, wow, I can't believe I'm here now. And I don't have this pain. It's amazing. I hear that from my clients all the time and I just love it so much. And, and even from ones that I'm like, gosh, I feel like I can sense, like, I know they're so frustrated and I feel for them so much. And it makes me like, man, I don't know if they're going to 
they're going to keep up with this because they're not getting the results that they want in that time. You know, like they're in pain longer than what they think. Like we all think we should be out of pain right now, but man, you've been dealing with that for 18 years. Not that it's going to take 18 years to get rid of, like it's going to take some time and be okay with that. Because I feel too, like I was kind of mentioning that I'm definitely focused more on it. And I want, I, I'm focusing on it because I want to know, Oh, what movements am I doing? What am I doing? So then I can give feedback to people who are trying to help me get out of it. But also I'm like, I got to just like not focus on it so much because the more you focus on the pain, like the worse it's going to feel. It's just a mental part of it, um, which actually reminds me, side note, there is a meditation that I did this morning. Um, I mentioned that I was getting back into meditation and I have, I'm just so proud of myself and it has not been every single day, but it's been most days and I'm good with that. Okay, that's realistic. That's sustainable. Um, but the meditation I did today was all about relieving pain and it was actually a 30 minute meditation, which was great. And it did help. And I don't know if they said this or if I like dozed off at some point, but it was like, I was imagining taking rocks and pulling it out of my hip. Okay. It's so funny. Cause I didn't think about that till just now. I'm going to have to go back and like, listen to that meditation and see if they're asking me to take rocks out of my hip. Anyway, when I do work, sometimes I do kind of like imagine different things and I'm like in the muscle and stuff. And so I don't know if that was like a me thing or if that was from this meditation, but Anyhow, let's recap. Let's recap. Today, we talked all about recurring pains. And again, recurring pain is a pain that comes and goes. And this can be one that comes and goes frequently, that comes and goes after several years. Um, some a pain that you have had treated before, maybe that you have not. And so it could be just any pain that comes and goes. It's happened more than once, basically. And these, you know, are caused for many things, but the most that I see, the major reasons are a compensation pattern. It could be your body mechanics, inflammation or stress, which I really put into one category, and then not getting the right treatment originally or not having the right maintenance treatment. And that is really just normal daily habits that are really good for full body health. And so the best approach is to basically get to the root cause treat it and have a maintenance plan. And you want to treat it in all the categories. You want to treat the tension in there. You want to treat the strength issue in there. You want to treat your alignment and you definitely want to treat the inflammation, stress, um, and all of that too. So I really hope that this was helpful. I hope you can get some relief from your recurring pain. Please let me know what your biggest takeaway was. Tell me if there's anything you're going through. If you have any specific questions, I'd love to answer them. And if you feel so inclined to share this, I would love if you shared it with someone that you think it could benefit. Thank you so much again. And please go do something good for yourself because you deserve it. And I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for spending time with me. And I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Pain-Free Lifestyle Podcast. Please don't forget to subscribe, like this episode, and comment your biggest takeaway. Please remember that this podcast is intended for educational and entertainment purposes only. It does not replace medical advice. Always consult with your doctor for medical advice. I hope you have an awesome day, and I will see you in the next episode.